video or? All right. Welcome, Professor Muhammad Yunus. My name is Felix Maya, and I'll try to uh, guide us through this short but uh, exciting event. First of all, I'd like to welcome everyone. Um, Mr. Knut, UN Resident Coordinator, Madam Ambassador, um, and every and representative of the government, Mr. Claudio Providas from UNDP. Um, today, Today is a, it's a part of a serious a national conversation where we bring, toge on, we bring together all stakeholders to talk about a social entrepreneurship, innovation, and how we can involve youth in the... Uh, okay, I'm sorry, it's too loud? Okay, I'm sorry, let me repeat again. There is a problem with the microphone. So, welcome again. Today is a part of a national conversation on social entrepreneurship, innovation, and youth empowerment where we can bring together all stakeholders to discuss and join forces how we can find ideas to make Timor Leste a better place. And before I would like to introduce Mr. Professor Mohamed Yunus, I would like to give um, opportunity to, to Mr. Knut to say a few words. Yes, please. <laughs> so um, it's a welcome to everybody and particular to our distinguished guest, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize laureate, Dr. Yunus. It's a great honor to be able to have you among us here. And it's fantastic that you could take a little time away from your extremely hectic schedule to, to share a few words with us. I'm extremely delighted to see so many young people with us here today. Um, as you all know, young people are an extremely large proportion of the Timorese population. We estimate 62% under 25. And as such, uh, young people um, are obviously those who will build the country, um, building on what the future past generations have done. Um, I did a little bit of a back of the envelope calculation before coming here. Um, and if we were to imagine that the young people of today could all earn the minimum wage of Timor Leste, uh, $115, before 20, up till 2030, which is the end date of the National Sustainable Development Plan and also the end date uh, for the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, they will make, I think, uh, approximately $10 billion. Now, $10 billion in Timor Leste is an extremely strong economic power the youth themselves uh, can be not only participants, but leaders, um, and not only um, uh, politically participating, but also economically, if they are given the opportunity to do so. And that is what, uh, what our discussion is about. Um, we, as uh, Felix mentioned, this is a series of events. We are trying to talk about uh, social goods and also entrepreneurship for youth. We, have, uh, we had the event on the 16th of September where the Prime Minister spoke to youth in several locations across the country live on TV about this subject. And uh, uh, he said that uh, the main question is how to advance the SDG agenda through youth innovation and entrepreneurship. We will have another uh, set of events, 12 to 14th October. Um, I looked also up before this, the uh, CV of Dr. Yunus. <laughs> Unfortunately, I found it was about 22 pages. So <laughs> I'm uh, with uh, so many impressive uh, achievements uh, that I, I think I um, cannot uh, repeat it here. Uh, but we all know, um, uh, and remember fondly the award of the Peace Prize in 2006, uh, together with the Grameen Bank. And maybe I should limit myself to read a quote from what the uh, Peace Prize Committee said at that time. They said, Mohammed Yunus, 
has shown himself to be a leader who has managed to translate visions into practical actions uh, for the benefit of millions of people, not only in Bangladesh, but also in many other countries. Loans to poor people without any financial security had appeared to be an impossible idea. From modest beginnings, three decades ago, Yunus has first and foremost through Grameen Bank developed microcredit into an ever more important instrument in the struggle against poverty. And I think it's not only the struggle against poverty, it's the fundament for development, because I think that uh, uh, it is not so much about people needing something and getting a handout. It is about engaging everyone, youth, uh, and also, as we talked about here, poor people, uh, with their capacity to drive development. Uh, they are the ones who can make development happen, which I think you will say much better than I will. <laughs> so I, um, I should round off um, and hand the floor to you. Before that, I would like to, to just say very briefly that um, from UNDP, beyond this initiative, we also feel that social entrepreneurship, social business, inclusive development needs to be a very important part of our work, not only with UNDP, but with other uh, actors in the area of development as well. Social business means that you focus on developing a profitable business, but you focus on developing a profitable business which is good for society. Something that contributes and contributes positively, makes money, but gives that money back as a benefit to the overall population. And that's what we would like to try to support. And um, I think this idea also comes from Dr. Yunus, as many other excellent ideas. And we thank you very much for that. And with that, I'd like to hand the floor over to Professor Yunus. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'm absolutely delighted to get a chance to meet you and uh, greet you and say a few words and exchange ideas with you. And it's, I get very excited when I meet the young people because uh, I see they represent the future completely differently than we have now, how to make that happen. That's the most important thing to do. Uh, first, I would like to ask, uh, how many of you have smartphones? Can you raise your hand? Just a smartphone. Yeah? Yeah, almost everybody has phones. Somebody who didn't raise the hand probably didn't ask, understand the question because I can't believe that today any young person don't have a smartphone. It's a, kind of a global phenomenon. The reason I ask that, you are not just a young person in East Timor, you are a young person connected to the whole world. That gives you a tremendous amount of energy, tremendous amount of possibilities, that you are connected. And tomorrow you'll get more connected than it is today. And since we are at the UNDP, um, gathering and with Not, who has been very kind to organize this. I'm very happy that uh, you insisted on this one because I was kind of running away. <laughs> so, but you insisted and I'm very happy you did that. This year in the UN General Assembly, United Nations General Assembly meeting, uh, Secretary General uh, Ban Ki-moon, he was giving his last address because this is his last uh, General Assembly meeting that he will have. His, his tenure of 10 years finishing now. He made a very passionate speech, a very powerful speech, and we are sitting there in the United Nations General Assembly. At one point of his speech, he puts his hand in his pocket and brings it out in his right hand, holds up something. Guess what it was? What was he holding? Smartphone. He was holding a smartphone in his hand. And with a very simple question, he said, when I, take, I took the responsibility of becoming Secretary General of the United Nations 10 years back, this thing didn't exist. 
Today, we cannot live without it. This is our life. That's the transition. That's the transformation of the world. How quickly it happens. Things that, which didn't exist, suddenly it becomes universal. Everybody has to have it. Everybody has it. And I was telling my colleague who is sitting next to me, I said he, he should tell another story or another, he pose, should pose another question. What will the next secret, Secretary General will show when he is making his last farewell speech? What will he or she, at that time we didn't know, now we know it's he. <laughs> uh, what will he or she will bring out from the pocket and hold up? Because by that time, that smartphone will be obsolete. Will be gone, finish. That's the power of technology, the way it changes. I said probably he will, ra he will raise his hand and pick his fingers and something will happen to the whole thing. <laughs> That's the power. And you have it. We didn't have it. When we grew up, when we, we are at your age, all of us, who, when we were at your age, we were writing in long hands a piece of paper, pen and paper. You don't see a pen anymore. Those things disappeared. And then write a very nice letter. You want to make sure your handwriting looks good. And at the end of it, write, read it again, make sure everything is perfect, then fold it and fo put it into an envelope. And lick some stamps to put on top of it and go out to the mailbox on the street. Not the mailbox you have in your computer. And then wait, and wait, and wait, when the reply will come. It may take a month, it can take months before you get a reply. When you get a reply, another envelope will come to you. You watch the postman go by, whether he's dropping anything for you. He didn't stop, he didn't get a reply. Some, one day he posts, he puts something in, in front of your door, you're excited that you got the reply. Today is different. You don't write anything anymore. You just type it out. And a smaller screen shows everything that you're writing. And the moment you say, click the button send, it's done, finish, it's gone. And if, a couple of minutes later you have a very elaborate response. You don't have to wait before you can even finish and walk up. You still have, you got a reply in the way. That's the speed today. Ten years from now, what will be the speed? It will be hundred times, thousand times speedier than you have today. So that's the generation that you represent. You're, you look like human beings, just like us. But you are different human beings. Because you have so much more power than we had. But you don't realize it because your parents, your teachers don't discuss about it. They treat you just like we treated, they treated us when our teachers were treating us. Don't let you, they don't let you feel that you, are, you look like human being, but actually you are superman, you are superwoman. In the movie that you see, Superman, he does everything, or Superwoman who does everything. That's what you are. Be aware of your power. Anytime you want, you can take that shape, all the dress and everything, you fly away. You can do that. Simply, it's here. You have to feel that you have the power. Once you know that you have the power, Next question you ask yourself, what are you going to make use of it? If you don't make use of it, it's all wasted away. You had the power to change the whole world, but you didn't do anything. You just left it there. What a shame. You had it, but you didn't do anything. You, I'm sure everybody read the Aladdin's story, Arabian Nights, Aladdin's Lamp. 
you have the Aladdin lamp in your hand. All you have to do is to touch it. And the digital GD will come out of it. And say, what can I do for you? You have to prepare your mind what you instruct the genie to do. If you don't have a right idea, you'll be wasting the power of the genie. If you say, just order a pizza, you'll bring the pizza. But you could have done much more than getting a pizza. You could have changed the whole world. You didn't do that because you're not prepared for that. That's the challenge. Figure out what will you going to ask when the digital genie comes out and say, what can I do for you? Say, do this. This is what I want. You tell them, nobody in the world should remain poor. Make sure of that. And say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It will be done. That's the power. You are the digital, digital genie yourself. There's not a separate body. You are the genie. So you can make that happen. So that's the basic question that we have to get things done. We have the power. And sometimes when you talk about the young people in a country like East Timor, they feel, well, we're a small country, far away from the rest of the world. All we can do is some little things around our country, around our home, that's all. You are absolutely wrong. You may be in this East Timor, you may be in a remote village in East Timor, but today you are connected to the whole world. Your action, you have the power, and your action can change the whole world, not just East Timor. East Timor is a small, a small piece. You should be aiming to change the world. And in the process of changing the world, you will change your neighborhood. You cannot cross the neighborhood and change the world. So your preparation is not to change East Timor. Your preparation is to change the world. The world is wrong. Find out how wrong it is. You think, no, everything is doing, they say, this is it. This is not it. You can change it completely differently. It's in your power. So that's why imagination becomes so important. Use your imagination. First thing you ask yourself, what kind of world you would like to build? Because you have the power. And how do we do that? Think about it. Talk to your friends. Together, fight with each other. He says, I would like to build it. No, 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 I would like to build this way, bigger way, not that tiny thing. Always think big. Biggest you can imagine. Don't compromise, don't make it small. A small is peanuts. It's uninteresting. Do the things that everybody will say, aha, this is something. Does it cost you anything to imagine? Does it cost? No charge. <laughs> imagination is absolutely free. It doesn't, you say, well, I'm a poor guy. What's the use of imagination? What do I do with imagination? In imagination, there is no poor guy. There's a human being. I'm a human being. I'm maybe poor. I'm a, my parents didn't give me much, but I'm a human being. As big as anybody can be in the whole world. So why should I small, think small? I think the biggest thing possible, wildest thing possible, limitless. And then what do I do after I think? Write down in a piece of paper. Number one, this is the kind of world I want to build. In that world, this will be the thing. And number two, this is another thing I would like to put in that world. Number three, this is another piece I want to have in this world. Put everything that you want in this world. It's a wish list. Just make that wish list as wild, as big as you can get. And after that, you have how many? You have 22 items on your wish list to make that world happen. Whatever number, I'm just throwing a number, 22 or 41, whatever. Write them down one by one, one, two, three, four, and all the way. Hang it on your wall. I guarantee you, the fact that you have written it down, the fact that you have put it on your wall, 
that world will happen. Absolutely guaranteed. It may take a little bit of more time, but it will happen. The point is, if you don't think, if you don't put that in your piece of paper and hang it from the wall, it will never happen. So imagination is so powerful. Imagination drives us in the way we want to go. If you don't have the imagination, where do we go? You drift, you float, don't go anywhere because you don't have a direction in your body, in your mind. Imagination gives you the direction. Imagination gives you the find, what is the destination we want to go? That's very important to find the destination. That destination is the most powerful. After you make all these powerful ideas, put it on the list and the imagination that you want to do, how do you start to make it happen? Again, my strong advice is start very small. Think big, biggest possible, but start the smallest possible. Make it feasible, make it workable. Because if you want to do the whole thing overnight, it will never happen and you'll get frustrated. If you do the, so everybody knows that, thousand mile journey start with the first step. I have to go thousand miles, but that doesn't mean I just fly over there, we don't. We have to take the step. If you know how to take the first step, that is the greatest invention of life. Because if I know how to do the first step, all you have to do is to repeat the step. And you'll get there. So the first step is the most important thing. One of the things I say, I created my own destination. For me, that's my own say. I said, it makes it easy, I have to have a destination. And I try to see how I can do that. My destination is defined by three zeros. It's easy to remember, three zeros. Zero number one, zero poverty in the whole world. And we can make it happen. And the world has lots of people. But I start with one poor person. If I can help one poor person get out of poverty, I know I can do it. Doing the second person will be easy because all I do is to repeat what I did in the first case. <clears throat> if I do five, <coughs> I'm way ahead. <clears throat> and everybody says, how did you do that? May I do, can I do that? Of course you can do that because I opened the door. Now it's a question of repetition. Everybody will learn from each other. And someday you say, way ahead, we come together way ahead. So always start as small as possible. Take the biggest problem that you know, take a small piece of that. Take a little slice and make it happen. If you can make it happen for the small size, slice, then millions and billions is nothing. Because we are millions and billions too. If each one of us is doing tiny, tiny piece, it gets it done. That's the power of individual. Don't let, let anything wait for government to do. Never. Always say, I will do before you do. They are responsible to solve problems, but they don't have the power. All they have is money. Money doesn't solve problems. Ideas solve problems. And you are richer in ideas than any government in the world. It's all in your head. You are more creative than any government in the world. Governments are by nature are not creative. Because they have to go through the bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is a slow moving thing. It doesn't jump. We can jump. We can go anywhere we want. Anything we want. Government cannot do that. Government has to be very systematic. Go back again and again because they have been trained, officials have been trained not to overstep. So they are very careful. We can overstep anytime we want. We can go and dismiss something and move on with our new idea that we have. That's our power. So start small and make it happen. So zero number one, zero poverty. Zero number two, it's more exciting. No unemployment, zero unemployment. 
And I asked the question, I'm sure you can ask yourself the same way, or a different way, it's up to you. I said, why any human being should remain idle? What's wrong with the human person? Not do anything. I said, why are you sitting, why are you sitting around? What do you do? Don't you do anything? I said, become un 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 unemployed. I didn't get a job. When I faced that problem in Bangladesh, it's young people telling me I don't have a job. I said, who told you to have a job? Why are you looking for a job? They cannot answer that question. Because everybody says, I have to have a job. Now he says, why do you want to have a job? I said, forget about jobs. Job is a very old-fashioned idea. It should have ended well long back in history. Somehow it survived in the universities, in the education institution. They are telling you, you have to work hard so that you can get a good job. If you get a good grade, you get the best job in the best company. Why should I go to the best job in the best company? I am me. I don't have to serve under anybody. That's it. I have so many things to do. So why should I sit idle? It makes no sense. And I try to give this to make young people understand. I said, imagine we are in the cave age. We are living in the caves. Would you be sitting idle, say, I don't have a job? In the cave? Would you be sending your job application from cave number five to cave number 10? Give me a job. If you did, you'll be finished. What did we do when we were in the caves? We just went ahead, get things done. It's a rough, rough life, very tough life. Not as easy as it is right now. Because we have to overcome the nature, overcome the other living beings around us, and survive on this planet. That's where we are. We are survivors. We are winners. We got through the whole history by our capacity to overcome things. How come today all we do is a job application? What happened to us? We forgot. Somebody made sure it's all cleansed out from our mind. All you do is a job, and where do you start a job? At the lowest position. When you begin a job, they don't go be at the top. They always give you at the bottom. And if you take a job at the bottom, what do you do? You take instruction from a tiny boss over you. You don't get a big boss because big boss is too far away. You got a tiny boss in front, in, over you, and he and she instructs you exactly what you should do. And yells at you if you don't do it right. So you're doing your heart to make sure you satisfy your boss. So your tiny boss creates you a tiny little robot. That's a job. There is no exception to this. No matter where you go, what country you are, you start at the bottom, a tiny boss over you will be shaping you according to his or her desire. So all the creative being you are, fantastic creativity that you had, so all clipped away, cut it off. Not only that, how you dress, even some of the boss make sure the dress that you did. They may not have a dress code, but the way you behave, the way you, they will control you on that. And your thinking process, what do you think? They control you. Why should I give up me? I'm a creative person, I'm supposed to create things. And in this, what I started out saying, you have the enormous creative powers because you have the connectivity and information all available to you on your fingertip, which we didn't have. Imagine that human being with enormous creative powers turn into a tiny little robots, do a repetitive work. Some people say, no, 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 that's not true. Job is also creative. I said, how come? Because you're designing things. I said, yes, I'm designing things to sell toothpaste. That's not the creative power I want to waste on, on toothpaste or a perfume. Is this, is this what I was born for? To sell toothpaste and 
in those little things that I do. My creativity is to impact in the whole world, not just selling a product. So I dismiss that creativity. Creativity for a purpose, great purpose, not a tiny purpose. So that's what the job is. I said, why can't we be an entrepreneur? Human be we are born as entrepreneurs. But our system pushed us into the wrong direction, that you have to work. So we work. And I was telling the university teachers downstairs, we were having a session. They were asking how to change the minds of the young people to become entrepreneurs. You are saying they should be entrepreneurs. How to change the mindset? I said, you are the one teaching them. You are the one creating the mindset. You are the one who made them believe that they have to work. So why blame them? I said, very simple thing you can do, if you want. You tell them that they are job creators, not job seekers. And then stop giving them certificates. Why do you need certificates? Because you have to apply for a job. You have to attach the certificate. I'm a graduate. I'm a graduate from the top school. So that the door opens for me. The bigger the school, renowned the school, bigger, bigger door opens for me, for bigger companies or bigger offices. That is the purpose of that piece. I said, you stop issuing that piece of paper. Everybody is running around to find ways to use himself or herself. Because they have no paper to present to anybody. They will realize that I have to be on my own. And the way we did it in the caves, I am on my own. I have to fight with the rest of the world. Then I create, I become entrepreneur, the, the person I am, I'm basically an entrepreneur. That's how, not few years, we survived in this planet for millions of years by being ourselves. When did the job idea came? A couple of centuries maybe. Millions of years we are by yourself and did things. So that is the wrong orientation. We go back to our original orientation. Be entrepreneur. Solve the problems of the world. That's what we do. And if you work for somebody else, what happens? Big company owned by somebody else, we make them rich. And then complain, look, they are exploiting us. You offered yourself as a mercenary to help them make money. If you didn't work for them, they won't be making money. So they, all the money is concentrated in few hands. 1% of the total population, how many, what is the population here now? Seven and a half billion people on the whole world. I'm not just talking about East Timor. The whole world, one, sorry, seven and a half billion people. Seven and a half billion people on this planet. And where do we go with that? All the wealth of all the world itself, which belongs to seven and a half billion people, is controlled, is owned by 1% of the population of the entire world. 1%. 1% of the entire world's population controls 99% of the wealth of the entire world. What kind of world is that? Is this the world we want to live in? No. We want to share, this is our wealth. How did they take it away from us? Because we helped them, we worked for them. If we didn't work for them, they wouldn't be getting that. If we become entrepreneurs, we compete with them. They have access to wealth, we have access to wealth. Because we are in business. So they cannot take away everything. If they employ us, we become their servants to make it happen. So it works better for everybody that we work together to make it happen. So that's the one that an unemployment issue is so important for me. Nobody should be unemployed because we come back to our natural self. We become entrepreneurs. Suppose 50 years from now, in a classroom, young people are discussing about the world as, as a history. They say, you know what, in 2016, there are a lot of people who are unemployed, young people who are unemployed. In Spain, there are 50% of the young people remain unemployed. They can't find a job. In Italy, 40% of the young people remain unemployed. 
South of Italy, 65% young people remain unemployed. Forget about East Timor, it's a tiny piece. Big guys. They don't have a job for the young people. In Greece, 70% young people are unemployed. While you're discussing this, everybody else says, wow, what is unemployment? Well, unemployment means they were not working. These young people couldn't work. They couldn't find the work. How come they can't find the work? Why, they, why, why are they waiting for the work? Well, they have to find a job. Why are they looking for a job? What is a job? Because 50 years later, people will not know what is a job. Because we do our own thing. That's the transition. That's the transformation that you have to bring in. Not following the same thing. If you follow the same thing, you get the same thing. Unemployment, poverty, all kinds of destitutions, and so on. So you have to find your own path. You say, well, is there such thing? As I first encouraged you, imagine. Start with imagination. Why don't we have a world like that? It looks like it's fun. Nobody's unemployed. Everybody's doing something to make it happen. And third zero is zero net carbon emission. You're familiar with that. And a fantastic thing happened under the new, under the present United Nations leadership, Ban Ki-moon and all the countries of the world signed an agreement. Now they are ratifying it. I think yesterday India signed off. So we want a much faster rate than we ever imagined. It took 40 years. You know, 40 years back, what they were telling when you say about the carbon emission, you talk about climate change, global warming, what was the reaction of our global leaders, our prime ministers, our presidents, our ministers? They laugh at you. Crazy guy, he said the world is going to be doomed because something is happening. We are here for millions of years, nothing happened. How come you say it is going to disappear? It's impossible to talk to them. But young people like you stayed on, kept on repeating, no, we cannot let this world be destroyed by you. You have to do something. And some created political parties to make sure to communicate because they don't understand the voices of the young people. So they say, okay, we know how to make you understand. We create a political party. So in many countries, they created a political party called Green Party. And they became important. People started voting for them. They started to become ministers. 40 years. It took 40 years of constant pressuring the government. And they all assembled summit after summit, rejected it, rejected it. And finally came to Paris, and they are pushed into signing it. They are not eagerly running into signing it. They are tremendous pressure created by everybody around. Make them do the right thing. It is the power of the citizens. They didn't provide the leadership. Our leaders didn't provide the leadership. It's the people who impose the will of the people on them, by political means, by demonstrations, by and then they signed on. Now they said, yes, we have a year fixed, 2050, 2050, net zero carbon emission. So that's what we want to do. If we get together, we can make it happen even before 2050. That's our power. So these are the three zeros. If you have three zeros, we can push ourselves to create the world that we are looking for. That's the world that I said, this is my imagination. But imagination, very much now supported by the facts here. Zero poverty is not a new thing. It's part of the SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, 17 goals. This is goal number one. We did a very good job in the Millennium Development Goal. Number one was reduce poverty by half 2015. Amazing thing, in Bangladesh, we never thought, nobody believed that we can reduce poverty in Bangladesh. It's such a big poverty. We achieved Millennium Development Goal number one by 2013, June. Two and a half years before the 2015. So you put your imagination and happen, make it happen. So we worked very hard, everybody worked very hard in Bangladesh to make it happen. 
Now, yesterday I see in the newspaper, World Bank report comes, 12.5% poverty, extreme poverty in Bangladesh. We were 80% poor. Now 12.5%. Yesterday's World Bank report that Bangladesh has come to extreme, push the extreme level down to 12.5%. 12, 12 it's possible. We simply didn't believe in people's capacity. If you give them the power to do that, they can do, undo anything that happened before. So this is the power. Today, we are on the way. In Bangladesh, we calculate each year how many people coming out of poverty, what percentage. We started out in the 90s, from 1990 to 1999, on an average of 1% 1 reduction of poverty per year. And we are very happy. 10% in a decade, we never heard of it. Then we came to 2000, 2000 to 2005, it was 2% per year, speeded up. From 2005 on, it is 3% per year. Now it's a three, currently it's a 3.5% per year. So it's, speed is increasing. And at that calculation, if you just continue to at that level of 3.5% per year, we come to zero poverty in Bangladesh way ahead of 2030. We don't have to wait for 2030. Now we tell, once we get there, then we put an ad in the newspaper. Big ad or full page ad. If you can find one poor person in Bangladesh, we'll give you a million dollar reward. And we say they can't find it because there isn't anyone. And that way we know absolutely sure there's not a single person in Bangladesh who is a poor person. And then what do we do? We build poverty museum because it doesn't exist. So people have to find out where it is. So they have to go to the poverty museum to find out. And the schools will bring their children to show what poverty used to be like. <laughs> because they don't see anywhere. And they will be sh shocked. Young people will say, oh my God, why, how did it happen to them? Because they cannot understand all the wrong things that we have done to them because it never happened to them. That's what is waiting for us. Not 100 years from now, the next few years, in 15 years from now or less. We can do that. It's real, it's not something fancy. We imagined it, we made it happen. When we had the Millennium Development Goal, this looked like imagination. Nobody believed in that. But today it's real. When we imagined that we want to land on the moon, it was an imagination. We said, this is crazy. People have to spend money for nothing. They are going to moon. It's impossible. Then we landed on moon. When we landed on moon, what, what did the people say? This is a Hollywood movie. It's not real. Because they can't understand that it's possible. That's the trick mind plays on us. We refuse to see things because we believe in something else. So changing mind in believing things make things happen faster. So that's why we want to hit that zero carbon emission. So three zeros. So three zeros, you remember that? See if that makes sense to you. If we all believe in three zeros, it will happen faster. If you don't believe only I, I'm the one believing, it will happen, but slower. But it will happen. Because that's the destiny of human being. Human being cannot rot on this planet. That's not what the reason for human being on this planet. Human being is much bigger creature than anybody ever can think of. But we made them impossible for them to exp exp uh, unleash their creative capacity. Everything is a kind of blockage. You can't move. So we want to break that blockage, move forward and make it happen. How will it make it happen? I have three mega force working for receive, achieving that. Force number one, young people. Young people is completely different. <laughs> completely different. All they have to do is to defy. Don't listen. Accept yourself, listen to yourself. And you can give the answer, not anybody else. If you believe in something, stay on the course. No matter what your seniors say, what your bosses say, whatever you, your 
big, big guys say, you believe in it, stay in it. And your judgment is better than their judgment. They can, I can tell you. Go to the judgment. Be clean in your mind and come to a judgment. Stay with it. If circumstances changes, now you see the different light, change your mind to do with something else. But somebody says something, I have to obey him, forget it. That's not the young generation for today. Young generation today is a completely different generation. It's a very empowered generation with technology, with access to information and all that. Make use of it. And at the same time, I give you a little warning on the top, bottom. I said, I'm telling you, you are the most powerful generation in human history. At the same time, I remind you, think about the children in your families. Your children, when they will be of your age, exactly the age that you are, when they will become your age, they will look at you. What will they think? They will think you are cave man, you are cave woman. You don't understand a thing. Because speed is so fast. What you think you are powerful now? Wait until they come. Before they come, you finish it off. Get everything done so that they cannot complain what you did or you did not. Because otherwise they say, you are lazy people. You didn't do anything. You had so much opportunities, you just wasted away. You made us suffer for that. So, stay out of it. We go. But if you did it, they will applaud you with the limited capacity that you had. You did wonderful things. Your limited capacity. For them, they have so much more capacity because technology has changed that. Because technology makes things happen. If you put technology in that direction, technology is a, is a tool. You have to put them to work and then make it happen. There is all the things that we see around us, many things you say, this is impossible, this is impossible, this is impossible. Every day, the list of impossible becoming shorter and shorter. What was impossible yesterday, today that is possible. Tomorrow, it will be such a routine, it's a boring thing. That's the speed. So it's your chance to take the list of impossible, get ready to tick mark, this is done, this is done, this is done. And that's the speed. If you don't do it, it will pass on to the next generation. And they blame you, you didn't do anything. We had to do it. Of course they will do something, but don't leave everything for them too. You have to show what your generation has done. Be proud of it. This is what We turn the history of the whole world. That is something. The world is moving in one direction. We said forget it about that direction. That direction is wrong. We switch them to another direction. That's our generation did. So you can say that. That's a challenge for that. So young people is one thing. The big power. Technology is the next big power, second big power. Use technology, create technology. Not only you use the existing technology, but you have to create new technology to get things done. Your things done, not somebody else's thing done. You have to be driver of the technology, not let anybody else be driver and do the things they want to do. They want to make money. That's why they bring technology. Who creates technology today? Money makers. They use the technology for their purpose to make more money. We change it. We create technology to solve problems. This is a completely different thing. Money makers make technology today. War makers take technology today. They want to kill each other. They are the one driver of technology. We don't want to kill anybody. We don't need those technologies. We have to close down those technologies completely. We want to keep people alive and happy. That's the technology that we'll be creating, not destructive technology to kill people, destroy the planet. Third power, social business. We want to solve this problem in a sustainable way. Charity is a good thing, but charity is not sustainable. So we have to do it in a sustainable way, make that happen. So that's why we keep doing social business. Social business is is a business to solve human problems in a sustainable way. That's what the social business is such a strong thing. 
we are putting this parallel to the money-making business. And people ask me, how big you think the social business will be in the economy? It will be 1%, 1.5%, 2% of the whole total economy? I said, why are you so stingy about 1% and 2%? I think about the whole world, the entire economy can be social business. There's nothing wrong with it. It's all us to decide. There is no superpower to decide what I do. I decide what do I do, what is the meaning of life to me. I decide who I am. Nobody else decides for me. And I raise this question again and again in my school days as I grow, who am I? What am I supposed to do in this planet? What role I have in this planet? I have to find that answer. Once I find that answer, I work for it. I found my role and I do it. Now you're telling me, no, you go out and make jobs and be CEO of a big company. To do what? That doesn't make sense to me. I don't want to be CEO of a big company, selling stuff in the market. I want to do things which has impact in the whole life of the world and make it happen. So we have to define the purpose of our life in our own way. It, it's not somebody telling you that this is your purpose of your life. You decide what the purpose of your life and stay with it and make it happen. So the third one is the social business, which can transform businesses in the way to make things happen, to change the world. If we bring all our creative power together, not a single problem of the world can survive. We can overcome everything. It's all in here. Our creative power, our technology, our youth, what's it happen? So that's the challenge that you have to come up with. See, you may, it may make sense to you, if it's fine, if it doesn't, figure out what, what else you want. I'm not imposing anything on you, I'm just sharing what my thoughts are, what I have gone through, how my directions have been guided by all this thinking, that's all. If it of any assistance to you in thinking process, if it makes you, the, ah, maybe I should do something like that, it, it is interesting for me, do that. But all I'm saying, I'm convinced, each one of you present today, each one of you who are not present today, has the power to change the entire world. You don't have to wait for anybody else. Go ahead and do it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Yunus, for the inspiration talk. I know you have uh, very little time, so we we would like to uh, pr uh, present you, uh, if you have any questions, would, would you like to be? Yes, if anyone has a question. Yes? Quick questions, because professor have a little time. Yes, gentlemen over there. Uh, my name is Julio Dos Reyes. Uh, from the Office of Prime Minister. Um, when we talk about uh, encouraging the, the young generation to prepare ourselves for uh, the future of the nation at the same time, the, the whole world and stuff, um, of course there is a bigger problem for Timor to address in our going directly with the young generation. Of course they have level of creativity and so on. But the thing is I think we fail to address the basic uh, principle of from parents to guide the kids um, to the right direction. Uh, by saying this is that for most of the time, you know, the reason I say this is I have nephews, nieces, and, and um, cousins at home that, you know, so uh, this is based on the fact of what I experience in, in, in uh, daily life. I understand that parents are too busy to give clear direction to their kids. Instead, they give everything they have to please them, like for instance, giving them nice mobile phones or cars and motorbikes, but they fail to explain to them how they get all this. And so, uh, for most of the time, I know that kids, when they watch TV, they open their eyes really wide. But the thing is, once they start to read a book about maybe learning creativity, then they start to fall asleep. And that's, that's one of the problems. 
And there is bigger problem again on top of that is that at this stage our country is trying to please people by giving free stuff. And that's also a problem because we are, we are um, trying to be dependent rather than having our own creativity to, to create things for our own to survive and stuff. And so, like for instance, if I was to stand up and say we need to change the policy of giving free stuff to our people, but the question is, who's going to elect me to make the changes? You know, there's a lot of people going to be affected by this kind of decision. And so there is a bigger problem that we need to address in terms of that. Uh, Professor, I, I've read briefly about um, the work you have done. You know, your theory have influenced over 90 countries around the world, and yet you still, have, you still face challenges of people questioning about the influence, the, you know, the things that you have done to make a huge difference in society, and this kind of thing. So for us to do, you know, to go from here and change the mindset of our young generation, you know, to move towards a, a, a way of, of, of thinking creatively, you know, is there any suggestion you could give us, you know, to look at the, the level of government and, 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 and so on? So thank you very much. So. brushed off. It's a very concrete things that you said. But what I was saying is uh, it's not that suddenly it changes everything. I'm talking about a process. It is small beginning as gradually it grows. That's why I was giving the example of a global warming campaign, the green campaign, the campaign, the climate change, stop the climate change. It is a slow process. Nobody listened to anybody. But it took 40 years to turn around the whole thing. But we have to start the process. Like you said, people like to be assisted to get help from the government, as free things. Yes, you're, suddenly you cannot say no free more, any, any, no free thing anymore. Then everybody will be angry at the government. That government will come down. They will elect somebody, we'll give you everything. See, that's how the politicians do. If you do something, this, and people don't like it, the other party says, will undo everything and make it happen. So if you stop that, suddenly change it. But you can do options. That's very easy. Option is, I can take care of you, give a monthly check every month to take care of your family, government will give you, you are poor, you help yourself. That's it. But there's another route. I can give you double the money, triple the money, if you invest. You can start your business, I can help you, and I can create a bank which will provide you all the capital that you need, all the equity that you need, and help you to design a business. Then I have to scratch my head. Would I take the free money, or I'd rather take the business money? So when you give option to people, people have nothing to complain, because you have given the option. So gradually some people will take the option of starting a business, and if they are successful, other people say, why am I taking tiny little money and not doing that? I could do the same thing. I can do better than him. So gradually people will start moving in that direction. So you have to create that environment, make it easy, make it exciting, and so on and so forth. About the parents' advice and so on is true. But today, again, the new generation, they are not waiting for parents' advice. This is the problem. This is another problem. They go right into the internet, get advice by people that you don't like to hear from them. Nobody would like to hear from them. But they go because it's free, it's open, you go there. This is more dangerous than not listening to the parents because you are keep them without any leash. So how to overcome? This is a technological problem. We have developed uh, some technology, I'm sure others are trying to, that is young people should be barred from certain sites that stop, they cannot enter. The rest, it's academic thing, interesting thing, fun thing, they can do as much as they want, but they cannot go to this until they're adults and so on. So how to make that happen? How to make computers, all the access things, kind of with that kind of thing? Not making again that they don't have access to any fun thing too. That will be dangerous too. Then they will start hacking your thing and move out of that. 
they are very creative too. They have the technological skill. So how to make sure that they don't go to the wrong sites and be in the site that they, they will be benefiting and exciting and enjoying that. So those are the real issues. It's not something that we can dismiss it because it's, a, it's a, something is a headache for us. We have to, it's, it's your son, it's my son, it's my daughter, your daughter who are doing that. So we have to be careful and bring them with this. It's not a kind of an order. They have to understand why we do that. With their support, we'll do that. And young people influence each other more than they are influenced by their parents now. That's where you have to go. Their education system has to transform so that when they influence each other, it also becomes a big, big wave that this is something for the right purpose. So these are difficult, but it's not impossible. That has to be done. Thank you.